Hi everyone and welcome back. I hope you're feeling really wonderful today. I'm so happy to be coming on and uh, talking to you about a video that I have been meaning to make and I am just now getting on to do it. Yes, I am talking about some of the very rare Yod transits that we will be having in August. These do not happen frequently and there's not really a set um, time period that we can rhythmically expect to have yods in the same sense that like, you know, Jupiter is in the same sign once every 12 years. Yods happen at very uh, unmeasured times uh, in very tight configurations. And indeed, we are going through them now. Of course, a yod in astrology is when an opposition axis is activated with uh, both sides of the quincunx as well on one side. And this basically creates a very pointy angle. And this particular angle, as I'm sure a lot of you are already aware of it, uh, is known as the finger of God angle. And it's one of the more uh, physically manifesting and uh, catalyst angles, aspects, configurations that we see in astrology. So I think it is a really great one to talk about. Um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about some intuitive messages that I have about the general time, and then I'm going to uh, put some charts onto the screen and uh, develop that a bit further with some of the uh, exact angles that are there. Um, so yes, I'm going to start just with some intuitive messages because I felt drawn to make this video today, not just because of the yods, but because of what I was feeling during the yods. Um, so I want to talk about that first. Uh, I have a wonderful uh, turmeric tea here with me right now as it is very much uh, helping with my health. I hope that you have something lovely uh, perhaps to drink as we go through uh, some of these uh, general messages coming through. and. Um, yes, also, quick disclaimer, uh, I do tea chats every week on Patreon, so if you've been looking for bonus weekly content, as well as getting a lot of the other content early and ad-free, I will link that below and in the top right-hand corner. And for those of you who are new, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, that's a great free way to support the channel, as well as hitting the thumbs up button and leaving a comment below. Anyway, let's uh, get into this. So... Yes, as I've been meditating on these yods coming in, I feel that this is one of the most important little segments of time. Basically, this period of time between around August 7th and around August 13th, that week is very important to come perhaps to a new connection to your timeline Okay, what do I mean by that? It seems that this period of time is really vital, not necessarily for implementing a change, though a lot of people will be doing that as well, but more so for maybe getting a different philosophy on how you relate to your own feeling of context, your own timeline. Um, I've been saying for a while, uh, and I will definitely reaffirm here in this video, that to make a timeline right now is really good. Um, as far back or as far forward as you would like to do, just to kind of, not so much to segment or cement in a project or a timeline, but to understand what your conscious mind is creating for you right now. Because I do feel that there's been a disconnect there for a lot of people in the sense that they are maybe every day productively working like bees on something that they feel no connection to, uh, perhaps within the greater span of their timeline. And what that ends up creating is basically... Uh, regret in the future as we find that a lot of our physical energetic output had no correlation to our deeper context. And that can lead to an existential crisis. You know, when we get discouraged by all of those years of work that did not really um, manifest for us something that we really felt was in alignment with our higher purpose. So that is a lot of spiritual jargon coming through, and to a degree, those words are not really um, something to get stuck on. But what, what we really need to contemplate, if we can right now, to really harness this energy in a productive way, I feel is really being our best cheerleader and seeing how we can apply what we've been through and what we've been learning to certain greater or what we feel to be greater paths uh, for us. And like I said, making that timeline, understanding where you expect yourself to be in the next two years, getting that on paper, making that real, making that physical, 
does feel like a really good um, even catalyst point during this period of time when we're having these yods because it's almost like what is on the mind right now or the blueprints or strategies placed into effect right now, um, these can almost have a feeling of like um, divine manifestation to them. When I say that to define that a little bit further, it can feel as if you've really utilized powerful timing or it can feel as if you really clicked or figured something out at the right moment or at the precipice of when it was needed. So doing things at the needed time uh, comes in very strongly right here. And also um, taking a look at what you are feeling as if you are divinely activated by, like what thoughts, what journeys, what careers, what places, what things you've been like just really excited to potentially take on one day. I think at this period of time, it's really wonderful to actually segment that a little bit into a more realistic timeline and to see if that makes sense with the current momentum, okay? One thing that I feel these particular yods to be pointing at again as this is, um, we, we've actually had two yods, and I'll go into this when we look at the charts in a second, but we had one, um, I believe it was on, I have the dates here, one second. We had one um, on, well, one is happening on August 10th, and I'm getting this video out before then, but the other happened on August 8th. So August 8th, there, and that one was actually um, on the Leo Aquarius axis. And then the August 10th one is on the Virgo Pisces axis. Two very, very um, empowered, activated axes of this year of 2021. Um, so the August 8th uh, yod would have already happened by the time this video is made. Um, by August 8th, and that one would have been a lot about uh, where we're getting our power from, what we do feel is empowering in our life, what we feel is disempowering us, and getting that really illuminated. And then this August 10th one, uh, which I'm going to be focusing on much more in this video because we're getting it a little bit beforehand, um, that one is on the Virgo Pisces axis, and it's very much pointing toward the moon in Virgo, which says to me that the way in which we define certain emotional experiences in our lives is coming up for some type of drastic reform, okay? Uh, the way in which we have a perfectionist tendency, the way in which we also pace ourselves emotionally, energetically, and pacing becoming a really important area to look at. I actually got a lot of psychic downloads about that. Um, that's going to be a huge focus as well for this time. And, and how long does this energy last? Well, I would say probably for the next six months, you know, having two really impactful yods like this um, and having these axes so extremely activated in this year cycle, I would say that we will echo for probably about six months with this yod, though, of course, the catalyst experiences are most likely in this um, mentioned time period of August 7th to August 13th. Though I feel that there's an air of uh, divinity or an air of purposefulness. Um, it's more of like a perceived divinity than it is like uh, truly there, though during this time you could actually have a very um, strong spiritual experience or a very strong uh, feeling, at least, of enlightenment. Um, these feelings are also something to, what do I want to say? to process and not act upon because there is a temporality about them or a, a non-permanence about what we're feeling right now as well. And I don't feel that any drastic decisions do need to be made, though the great part about it is it really highlights, I don't know, the truth of where we really stand and what is real in our lives. Being that this Virgo Pisces axis is being lightened up and given this sort of strong injection of energy says to me that there might be, yes, a disconnect between what is a real part of our life and then what is a dream, okay? So the dreams can also, in that sense, start to become real. Um, the Also, what has been real can now disappear and become dream again. So there's a transference happening there also with the Aquarian energy um, mirroring that as well. And what I feel is that this is um, a great thing to think about. You know, what dreams do I want to make real in my life and what is a real part of my life that I'm not so much uh, wanting to be a real part of my life anymore? It's good to meditate on that, though I also feel it's overwhelming for a lot of people because it's hard 
uh, right now to distance ourselves from things which are successful. Even if we don't like it, it's very difficult to turn off a tap of stability right now. Um, though I do feel that that is coming up for a lot of people to face in some way as well. Um, the basically, and I do want to share this, I'll go ahead and share this right now. Um, one of the most, I'm finding where I wrote it down at actually, as I was meditating um, today and before this video and, and coming to this actually is what um, pushed me to make this video in this very moment. Um, I came to this very like poignant uh, series of words. Um, <clears throat> so careful about reading things too quickly, piecing together words that are not there, unwittingly creating false narratives. Slow down and understand what you're really dealing with. Okay, um, so again, Virgo Pisces axis coming up with this yod. Uh, there is a slowing down, I think, that needs to happen. And there is also, I think, a trial with it. You know, I'm actually, um, how can I explain the psychic image that I'm getting? Basically, I'm seeing that we have to be able to move at a very solid pace without rushing, though being very agile at the same time, really being able to move our feet quickly, really being able to um, expertly navigate through in a paced way without losing steam, without quitting, without stopping, without you know, giving up on our trial here. We have to keep moving through in a paced way and we have we are very much tested on the agility that we have in this process right now, I think. Um, and maybe there is a breach in quality for some people of the experience right now due to too heavy handed of a pacing or, you know, um, you know, for example, are we prepared to um, really accept conclusions from others that are um, filled with um, inconclusive results, though presented as results? That's really possible right now. And I think that um, only at the level of the self can this really be implemented. So uh, there's going to be a sort of masterful, what do I want to say? There will be an air of mastery to whatever you're putting your mind to at this point in time by the end of the year, if you can keep on keeping on while also being very deliberate and very um, well positioned and very agile in how you do it. And I must really um, warn about a tendency to uh, jump to conclusions, okay? Um, a tendency to have not read the fine print and be assumptive about the conclusion of something that uh, we have no knowledge of, actually. I can see that very strong at this time as just sort of just a mundane uh, message. Um, so that could also be societal and collective as well. Like, are we getting a tendency to, like, assume that certain um, tweets on Twitter might really be representative of certain very complex issues? Are we having a tendency perhaps to hear a rumor that has passed through 30 different people and really assume that that is an accurate representation of that person whom the rumor is about? Okay, so we have to uh, care and exercise a true caution about red apple, blue banana stuff because that is very possible at this time, as I do feel with this yod, that there is actually a breaking of reality for some people. Okay, um, so I would think about that too. I would think about um, not telling oneself the truth about the experience that they're in. Um, what would I say? Dressing things up, uh, packaging things which do not relate to the content of what you do, though express it in some way are areas of debilitation, I would say right now. In essence, it's better now to focus on the content of something than it is about the packaging. Um, it is also better to um, get things from the source or really read that entire uh, book or read that entire statement or whatever it is in a way that doesn't lead you to the possibility of having a false idea about something which might actually have 
intense results for your life. So that's the danger of this time. And it's not to create fear. We don't want fear right now either. But it's important to know that if we can't face, you know, the the wholesome um, series of things in front of us, if we can't just look through that and slow down and pace our ways through it, it's very unlikely that we will actually have an understanding of what we're involved in and what really is the long-term trajectory of being in that place, okay? Um, it's not a long-term trajectory that is tending towards stability. It's a long-term trajectory that's tending toward um, sort of like a precarious, constant feeling of unsafety or lack of stability. And that's just something that I think that we can be very empowered to face right now and actually create true stability in our lives by knowing how we are positioned at this point in time. And um, my last intuitive messages before we look at some charts is going to be, um, yeah, about the unmanifested, okay? As I feel this to be the most important things, and this will probably segue me actually, because I'm really like seeing that chart and I'm like, yeah, this is all about what we haven't come into yet, what we haven't actually dealt with or faced or been lucky enough to experience uh, hanging sort of in the wings of our current path, okay? Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and segue off into the charts because I think that this, is, this next intuitive message is best expressed um, in the context of the chart. Um, so this is the August 10th chart here uh, with the Virgo Yod. Okay, um, so why I feel that this is about uh, especially emotionally perceiving the unmanifested, it sounds a little complicated, but it's really not, um, is this Yod is being formed by the Neptune opposition to Moon, and then Chiron and Jupiter, uh, Chiron and Aries, Jupiter and Aquarius, on the either side creating the yod uh, towards the moon and the uh, other part of the Virgo stellium. Um, so we have Jupiter and Chiron um, acting as uh, peripheral catalysts in this case. And both of these planets deal with higher purpose. Jupiter and Chiron both do, okay? Jupiter is the more of the like purpose oriented, like I'm so motivated to achieve this. I have these philosophies and these ideas and these concepts in my mind, and they are all combining together to make me feel so happy that I'm motivated to uh, do this. And with luck, I'm going to get there. And then Chiron, as it relates to purpose, is about the turmoil and difficult experiences that lead us to want to better the world or to better our life, at least through some type of transcending process. Uh, so both of those are coming together along with Neptune. Um, to point straight at the moon in Virgo, suggesting that uh, we have to start really getting our mind conjunct with these higher purposes, okay? Because it feels that they're hanging in the wings for a lot of people. Like a lot of people have seen it maybe even for quite a while at this point in time, though they're still kind of plodding along on a previous secure path uh, that is not declining it because nonetheless these transits have come up so it's not as if the purpose has been declined or rejected though it has nonetheless not really been uh tapped into by a lot of people so here is definitely an opportunity to um tap into it or to start a path that actually is leading you to these higher purposes so the main way i think to work with this energy in a positive way because again yod as an astrological uh, configuration is not a positive or a negative, you know, in the sense that we think that like trines, sextiles are positive, and then like oppositions and squares are negative. Um, of course, they can go both ways, but Yod is not grouped into either one of those. In fact, mo more astrologers would probably tend to group Yod as like more leaning towards negative just because of the potency of it. And it's hard for humans to really um, channel that without a uh, fallout. It's kind of like uh, Pandora's box stuff. It's kind of like um, Holy Grail. Like, can we really... Like, and that's what I feel a lot of people are faced with right now. They're like, wow, I see my purpose head on. And I actually have the ability to do that. Whoa, how do I process that? It's like not even for a lot of people that 
what their purpose is or what they want is somehow a difficult process to get to. And that, that's what's crazy about this general time and about this paradigm is it's like to a degree, it's totally accessible, like what you're wanting or what you're seeing for yourself, totally accessible. But <laughs> we love a contrast, I know. But it's um, for some reason not being followed through on for a lot of people. So going through this and if, if that is something that resonates for you, like, okay, I know what I want, but for some reason I'm having trouble like actually committing to that or um, actually facing that. On one hand, I would say there's a fear of failure. Um, I would say, you know, to look at the shadow side, there is um, a feeling that we're not strong enough to do it, or there's a feeling of being rejected, or there's a feeling of um, sacrificing the current security on a whim or on something that doesn't have a guaranteed result or what we think doesn't have a guaranteed result. Um, and also there's a, there's even a procrastination element to it. There's a, maybe the, a deep, deep point that says, you know, I'm not sure that I can handle all that hard work, or I'm not sure that um, actually that is what I think it is. So there's, with again, the Pisces, the Neptune aspect of this yod gives a fogginess, and, and that is what is really forming the yod at the opposition level. So Neptune and the moon are truly the most two important um, planets happening in this configuration. You know, um, and I'm just seeing so many other layers to this, actually, this chart, um, it's just a lot of information is coming through. Uh, the main yod in this chart, at least, uh, the Neptune um, moon one, is about um, emotional clarity and as it relates to goals and motivations with Mars and Jupiter and Chiron um, and Saturn and even Pluto all being so close. It's like, ooh, what many, many generations and many, many lifetimes have coalesced together to create through like ancient wisdom, through ancient things like all of these outer planets doing what they're doing right now is uh, so rare and so, so, um, you know, these are like once in a lifetime opportunities for some people right here. Okay. This is, that, that's what I want to actually frame this around. So once in a lifetime opportunities and the emotional clarity, the emotional relativity that it takes to embrace them because you'd be surprised about how much our just just our emotions, not even our actions, not even our past, not even our bank accounts, all those like real things. Um, just our emotional sort of middle ground, uh, starting point, how we're feeling when we wake up in the morning, how we're feeling when we go to sleep um, without any stimulus, okay? That point, it seems to be very tied in to perhaps the delaying of purpose or the um, wanting to hold on to what is here even if it's not quite right, the need to take that leap of faith. Should have already happened maybe for some people, but there's still a good like two year cycle here, I feel, for people who want to really like prepare and, and get them, themselves strong to do that. But um, yeah, I do just want to maybe give a little bit of a, what we'll say, an alert notification about uh, the once in a lifetime opportunity that is coalesced right sort of peripherally here because it's not so direct because these whole like this whole like once in a lifetime aspect is not from the Neptune moon opposition it's from the Jupiter Chiron Mars Venus Saturn Pluto component of this chart. So it's a feeling, and with Neptune Moon, it's like, uh, it's just taking a long time to get into the right headspace, to like have everything clear in my life, to like go through the motions and do the repetition and just know why I'm here and why I'm doing that. And as all of that kind of nebulous uh, thought bubbles last a while, these once in a lifetime opportunities start to mm, spread out and it becomes less catalyst and more as if we just have to check a lot of boxes in order to get there. It's not that, cause, cause what astrology is never meant to do. It's never meant to give you a feeling that it's like now or never. And I've got to like play my hand right now. Cause that's a good configuration. Um, it's not like that. It's just that otherwise with, as this transit breaks up and as we move through the rest of this year, things become a little bit more like um, task oriented. And I mean, they already are to a degree, but it becomes more like 
monotonous to deal with things. But I will say here at this opportunity right here, there's a great ability to just really perceive with emotional clarity where you're meant to be, what you're meant to do, like life meaning, life purpose, stuff like that is very much right at the forefront at this time. Um, and the last intuitive uh, idea that I have about this after uh, digesting this chart a bit um, is that in traditional Yod fashion, I do feel that something is really pointed out about this time. And most likely it's something uh, of emotional context, okay? Uh, because this Yod's uh, point is at the moon. Um, so there's going to be something about the way that we ebb and flow with life, about the way that we um, kind of lack uh, fixation or... Um, tend to change a lot, like changing our minds about what we want, uh, a, f a feeling of hot and cold, a feeling of indecisiveness. Um, also with anything relating to uh, addiction or anything relating to relationships as well as Venus and Mars are wrapped up in this. Um, what I'm thinking is that we have to just really point it out. Like we have to be able to point out like, okay, I'm not allowing myself to have a relationship, but at the same time, I am constantly on like dating apps. That's just a hypothetical example. But that's something that I see in a lot of people right now, especially younger generations right now. Um, and that to me feels uh, very destructive. <laughs> um, also like um, anything with relating to purpose in that way too, with Mars and Jupiter, you know, here and being so oddly connected. It's like um, knowing that I want that one goal, but not contributing to it. These are just like recipes for um, distress and recipes for crisis and recipes for um, dissatisfaction. So then we really have to ask ourselves, like, is there something glamorous about being um, immersed in a life of distress? Is there something that we don't even realize that we're perceiving as glamorous about these difficulties or about these um, conundrums or about these uh, constant disputes in our lives. Um, that to me feels like what might be pointed out by this yod is that, okay, it's not that we don't want distress. It's that we actually need it as a part of our narrative, or we are not understanding or realizing that, um, a feeling of dispute, dissatisfaction or turmoil in our life is, um, deeply wanted at the level of narrative because then it's like we learn that lesson. And to a degree, yes, with difficult experiences do, does come wisdom and strength and things like that. But I also feel that that's not a necessary thing anymore. I feel that we've had plenty of that. And I don't think that this time requires that at all either with this paradigm. There's something very floating also. There's something that really floats with this energy and something that just kind of has like a buzziness about it. You know, all this air and fire energy. And then even... I mean, the only heavy signs that are represented are, yes, the Pluto and Capricorn, and I suppose to a degree, um, Neptune and Pisces and the Virgo energy, but nonetheless, it's not really heavy, okay? Like the lighter, more transcending, transcend, transcending process-oriented signs are weighing out the deep, heavy, you know, existential signs. So that's something to keep into mind as well. Like, you know, to have a lot of stress, to have a lot of chaos, to have a lot of uh, feeling of um, stuckness or stagnation, okay? Uh, that is kind of out of time. And to a degree, I think that those types of scenarios, of course, are going to be experienced by some people, depending on your personal chart. There might be something that um, is sort of a contraindication that's like, yeah, that, that would make sense. But... Um, mundanely and at the level of collective, this is much more a time of prosperity and much more a time of uh, transcending certain previous difficulties. So whenever we come to a point of transcending, there's always a uh, residual um, experience. So once we come to the point where we're ready to transcend relationships with narcissists, for example, there's probably going to be a very potent narcissist that comes into our life right as we start to transcend that because it's like a test, right? Right at that point that we're about to transcend addiction, very often the opportunity to partake in that addiction again comes right to us as that testing point. Have we really mastered it? Have we mastered ourselves yet? Have we overcome the um, lack of self-control? This is what the universe usually asks us when we come to transcend. And I probably feel that for a lot of people, this yod that's echoing for the next six months, but most strong from like August 7th to August 13th, 
is going to probably put right in front of us something that is a transcending test. So can you overcome this now? Or do you want to jump back down? Like it's like there's no right or wrong answers. It's just like the choices made now determine it. So keep an eye on the choices, okay? Keep an eye on the logical mind as well. That seems like a really good place to uh, compensate with this in a healthy way. Like um, logically, does this seem like a good move? Logically, what really is the outcome of situations like this? Like logically... Uh, does it look like I'm overcoming this or does it look like I'm kind of being really haphazard with um, trying to just make some type of result and have not really focused on what that result is? Uh, try to think logically at this time. Emotional thinking, Neptune opposite moon at the crux of the yacht is like um, inevitable for some people. And also like the results of previous hyper emotional decisions um, can come back. So basically karma for that, like it's very karmic. And I, I'm sure that many of you have been seeing that since July, like this. And I felt that that was going to be a very potent part of 2021 was rebalancing of karma and resetting of the scales. Uh, so basically if you've done good things, you would be repaid for that. Now, and if you've done bad things, you would be repaid for that. Everybody has a little bit of both. Like that's kind of, um, the human condition. So that's why this year has been so difficult to define for a lot of people. Lots of benevolences, lots of difficult experiences as well, as, as well at the same time. Lots of stuff to weigh through just because it's kind of trying to get us back to a center point, a neutral point. And this yod is probably going to be the most important catalyst. And then also at the end of this year, there's going to be a potent eclipse season. So November and December of 2021 we'll really come through and see what we're made of now and see the difference and and see how much stronger we are now. Okay, side note, everyone, try to develop your strength. Okay, try to develop your um, fortitude in any way. So that might mean bone broth for some people. That might mean turmeric tea as it is for me this evening. Um, also core exercises and uh, the letting go of people things and, I don't know, situations that are uh, toxic or creating havoc in your life um, so that you can be strong enough to handle it because I will say the latter half of this year that we're about to step into in September is a, it, it's just very, very difficult for people who have a tremendous sensitivity to changes or a tremendous sensitivity to um lack of control or anything like that, I will say on like the level of the world, on the level of um, currency, economy, things like that, we are really by like September and then through like January and February going to be in a place where there's not going to be most likely a feeling of um, predictability, a feeling of um, knowing how that goes or... Uh, predicting for there there's not going to be any of that so that's because the universe is wanting to test our capability now at the present moment you know how we talked about that for a long time on this channel like over the last year and a half two years even about the relationship with the present moment um, not getting lost uh, with your relevance to the past or the future but also not being ruled by those things that's going to start in september to become um destructive to have any type of really strong past or future connotation to you that's why it's good to get these timelines in order now and why we've been working ever since the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in Aquarius around the time of December um, 20th of 2020 uh, to really understand what we like our lives to be, what we want for ourselves. And that, to a degree, is a very nebulous, arbitrary uh, little game to play because that doesn't always take into account the helping hand of the universe or the other people or other figures that come into our lives that uh, give us certain... Um, new contexts, but it is really good to understand what the soul enjoys or what the soul has seen for itself, regardless of what that process or uh, reality consists of, because we just kind of need to understand how our conscious minds have processed what has transpired thus far and what it thinks might be the outcome of that. So to a degree, we can really measure that up here and understand if that's uh, right with this yod. But I will say, as this yod passes, and and as a lot of you know, we've been in this crazy like Lion's Gate portal and other portal energy. I don't even know if it's that one, but it's something portal-like has happened at the end of July and uh, is finishing up after this yod, actually, like August 10th through August 13th. 
And then there's going to be kind of a sea legs that happens for the rest of August. And to a degree, I will say all of Virgo season is like that. But it's also possible that even like September 1st of 2021, that there's no, there's no like getting obsessed about the past or getting obsessed about the future. Okay. We can kind of understand our previous set motions or like what we set into motion before and, and the relevance that that gave us and what we, what our higher purpose is like, we can understand that. But as for getting like really caught in that and really um, losing a lot of time to that process is not something that I think will even really be activated in people by certainly by Libra season of 2021 um, because we are in action at that time and we are dealing with what we have created for ourselves at that time. And also we are, I feel, collectively almost seeming as if it's more unpopular to like be very um, goal ambitious oriented or also super nostalgic and sentimental about the past and really like can't let go of anything. I feel that both extremes on that scale are not, are. I'm not going to say unpopular, but you, it would be like a, and, and as it should be, it wouldn't be something that you're going to commiserate about with company or it's not going to be something like you would see, like if you're with a group of people and you're like starting to talk about like, oh, I, mean, I have this goal or, oh my God, I can't believe that person did this to me five years ago. You'd start to see that people just like are soon like leaving your house or they're just not like coming back or something. Um, and it would basically put you back into this paradigm that we're in now, which is a much more solitary moment where things like that are more appropriate, where we deal with those things um, at the level of self or in prayer. Okay. Um, so yeah, praying is really good right now. <clears throat> and again, not for sure until September 1st, do I feel that we really start to have to step into action. So there's leeway at this time. It's very four of swords. I see that some people are like healing from illnesses right now. Also with this yod, um, I see that some people are journaling a lot, um, sitting with the hopes and dreams of the future. And that's really beautiful. And I think probably to a degree for many people, the entirety of like 2020 and 2021 and the events that happened during that time that led to more isolation really did, I think, bring a lot of people to that point where it's like, okay, what am I doing with my life? Like I have this extra time alone or I have this extra time indoors. Fourth house energy, it's where you really build your foundation and understand how you um, ascend and elevate in your life from that from that very bottom point. Um, that phase can't last forever though. And I think that because there's something very comfortable about that phase, it's fourth house. It's like protective feeling. It's like, I've not actually put this stuff into motion yet. Like these are all like dreams. These are all like plans and it's like blueprints and like my house and I'm safe here and I'm dreaming and it feels good to think about that. But at the same time, I'm like in bed and that's really like comfy to a degree that is going to be over by the latter half of this year. And certainly by the year cycle of 2022, it's like that will not be something that is helpful to us anymore. So things are opening up, things are going to be breathing more, things are going to be much more action oriented. So I've had a little bit of a tangent about that. Uh, but it's good to think about that now while we're actually still in that space, because I would say as this video is going up, like August 9th, 2021, we're still strongly kind of in that place of like, where do I want to take my life? Where do I want, like from the comfort of my own home, dreaming about how things could be. And that's so beautiful. And that's, and you know, we've had so much chaos otherwise in the world that might have kind of taken away from how beautiful of a process that really can be with like fear and stuff. Um, but I would really give it to yourself in this middle part of August, in this latter part of August even. I know a lot of us are already actually getting really busy with action. Um, but what, what you can give to yourself of like dreaming and hoping for the future and allowing your memories to construct a really relevant place for you now that's really beautiful to a degree that like we can actually transcend just through sitting in safe space with that notion. And then we really got to start to um, elevate, I think, after that. Okay. So anyway, everyone, I'm going to leave you on that thought. I hope you really enjoyed this nice little stream of consciousness and dialogue. I think we've been going for quite a while now. Um, I will definitely invite you over to my Patreon page where I do bonus weekly forecasts every week. 
Uh, the community over there is wonderful and you get a lot of perks. I will link that below and in the center of the screen of this video. Um, and of course, it's just a, such a great free way to support the channel by hitting the red subscribe button. It's totally free, of course, and hitting the like button and even sharing this video with someone you love or commenting. All of those are wonderful, wonderful ways to support. Now, I'd love to get your ideas about uh, if this resonated for you or about like if you're going through similar things. Where are you falling um, when it comes to how do I want to you know dream or step into action? I think I'm really interested to understand how other people are feeling within that context. So do leave me a comment below if you get the chance as well. And without further ado, everyone, enjoy this yod time. Again, it points something out. Like I do want to conclude on that notion. Like there's something pointed out. There's something really seen, and there's something that we do have to you know if we want to feel stronger and if we want to really get out of um, like a rut as well. I think that it's super important to, as we see these pointed out things that have maybe been there the whole time, we just couldn't see them for what they were, try to understand the significance of it. Like what does it mean that this is now pointed out and like what is really uh, an action that is like fail-proof or something? But that, that's really not even a, um, a bad way of thinking right now. Like things that seem fail-proof that are not really that like, packaged or falsified or turned into something that they're not to like meet like a marketing type of tendency or like what looks good in popular culture like what is like there's an element of that that's very relevant this year too but i will say that it's some no, i don't think that it's a long-term thing i think that it's in a way um uh, going to be seen as like marketing attempts like regardless of what you're doing regardless of what you're partaking in whether it's a business whether it's like a new self image or something like make it real, make it you make it authentic, you know, and, and that word gets thrown around in, in bad ways to a degree that people use like the word authentic or authenticity in so many false ways at this point. But I, as you guys know, like the true, what truly is authentic without having to use that word in like your life in a way that's not real, but again, kind of a tangent, but just really think about what you've seen in your life this year so far and do you like that is that what you want for the future and if it needs changes what's a really logical and real way to um have things in your life that you really stand behind okay i would say the most difficult time the most difficult thing of this time is to be contributing to something that you don't really stand behind that's really difficult so but nobody is stuck there okay with this yacht it's really like pointing out what could be done or also what will make these conundrums that some people are facing right now uh, real for them, okay, uh, without feel without a feeling of loss. So anyway, everyone, uh, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, reading. And yes, as I said before, before I went off on another tangent, you can click the center of the screen to check out the Patreon page. Um, and also there will be other relevant links below in the description box. I hope you're enjoying August. Enjoy these yods. It's very, very truthful stuff. Anyway, talk to you all soon. Bye.